guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. First one is titled Entitled Lady Tries to Steal My Grandmother's Dog. This is not something I was there to see but my cousin saw it and told me all about it. First off, this area is not a neighborhood. This is a place surrounded by cornfields with two houses next to each other. Leash laws are not a thing in this area. As long as your dog is on your property and not causing any damage to others it is fine. So, grandma, cousin, and grandma's friend were sitting outside on the front porch talking. Their dog was playing in the front yard doing her thing. They see this lady walking in the middle of the road. Like I said, this is an area surrounded by cornfields and there was not another house for miles down that road. Their dog gets interested and starts getting kind of close to the road. Grandma starts calling for her, she looks at grandma, and then crazy lady starts calling for the dog. Their dog is super friendly and loves new people, so she instantly goes in the middle of the road to crazy lady. Crazy lady starts petting their dog. Everybody on the porch is getting up and going towards the lady to get their dog out of the road. This lady picks up their dog and starts running down the road. Everybody starts shouting things like, that's our dog, and bring her back. Even the neighbor heard the ruckus and screamed, hey, that's their dog. Everybody was so surprised. Grandma's friend gets in her car and starts following them down the road. Their neighbor also gets in their car and chases them down the road. Cousin is calling the police and grandma grabbed a broom to use as a possible weapon. Cousin gets a hold of police, and they send somebody who was already on this road heading into town, about four miles down the road. Grandma's friend blocks off crazy lady with her car, jumps out, and tries grabbing the dog out of crazy lady's arms. Crazy lady is not having it and tries pulling the dog back. Poor dog is stuck in a pulling match. The neighbor shows up also blocking her off. The cops then show up letting my grandma, who now also has a large stick, grab her dog and walk back to the house. The cops start asking questions a crazy lady starts claiming that they were stealing the dog from her. After the cops absolutely don't believe her, she claims that she was taking the dog to the dog pound because she was being abused by her owners because she was in the road. Even though crazy lady was the one to call the dog into the road. Also, this lady was on her way to a city that was in the other direction and currently 15 miles away. The cops asked my grandma if she wanted to press charges and she decided that it just wasn't worth the hassle. I-D-E-F-I-E-N-T-L-Y would have. The cops ended up taking her to the county line and dropping her off there. My family thinks she was on drugs because she was spacing out a lot and didn't seem totally there. Next one is titled, No, this dog is not for sale. A Karen tries to buy, steal my corgadoodle. I know people like hearing stories of Normas, you call them Karens, getting thwarted, so I thought I'd send you one of my favorites. The day I made a Norma cry. Okay, on the outset, I didn't intend to make the person cry. However, I am not going to sit back and let someone try to take my dog from me. I have a 10-month-old corgi, labradoodle mix, aka, a corgadoodle. She's a sweet, derpy, black doggo the size of a full-grown corgi, though she has some filling out to do. She has a white patch on her chest, and one ear straight up and the other ear flopped over, and a little stub for a tail. No not docked, she was born that way. Anyhow, this happened last summer so it's not exact verbiage. One of the postings here I was reading reminded me of it. So, I had Gigi out for a walk and, as usual, she was bouncing around and being wild. Anytime there were people, she'd want to run up to them and want them to pet her. I have a retractable leash that can be locked at various lengths, so I tend to keep her on a short leash as I'm training her how to walk on a leash without pulling, and once she's learned that she'll be learning how to signal when someone's having an anxiety attack, yes, she's being trained as a service dog. So, I often go by the park because there are a lot of people there and it's a good place for her to learn to walk without getting distracted by others, when this one Norma comes up. I just removed Gigi's service dog in training vest because it was hot out and we'd stopped so I could give her some water. By the way, dog owners, always carry a collapsible water dish and a bottle of water with you on a hot day, doggos will thank you for it. The kids with her asked if they could pet her, and since her vest was off, I said yes. 
When that vest is on, I would say no. This way Gigi knows that vest means she's on duty. The kids pet her, and, of course, my little dork of a pupper is absolutely loving it. Wagging her little stub tail a mile a minute. The lady talks to me a short bit about the dog, and I explain that I got her from a friend and that she's currently under training to be a service animal, and that she's a bit nervous around other dogs, but loves kids, you know, just small talk about the dog. After a while, I decided to get going, Puppard had her drink and it was still another 7 blocks to get home, and I was a little tired. So, I go to leave, and this Norma starts asking me where I thought I was going. I told her I was leaving. And she was basically like this. No, you're not, they're not done petting her. And I was like, lady, I'm tired, I need to feed my pupper, and they've been petting her for almost a half an hour. I have to go. Well, she doesn't like this and then starts demanding I leave my dog with them. First, she's like, oh I'll give you money for her, my kids adore her. And of course, I refuse. I'm not giving up my dog. Then she starts threatening to call the cops claiming I'm stealing the dog from her kids. I told her to go ahead, I can prove I'd had Gigi since she was little and she's chipped. So, the Norma actually tries to grab her leash from my hand. Now, I'm not proud of this, I try to teach kids that violence is not acceptable, but yeah, I slapped the woman, hard. Of course, she starts screaming like I'd tried to kill her or something, and while I do carry weapons on me even on mild walks, knives in my purse and a small hunting knife on a necklace chain, I never pulled them on her. No, she didn't call the cops, but local ones that patrol the park during baseball games were there, and one did show up. The Norma immediately starts bawling and screaming how I slapped her and is trying to steal her dog, and all the normal BS we see in Norma stories around here. When the cop asked me about the dog, I told him the dog was mine, her name, her age, I even took out my phone and showed him her puppy photos including the photo of the day I got her. Yeah, I know, I'm such a proud puppy mama, I have to show off photos of my sweetie. I also said if you want. I can show you her ID number for her microchip and show her registry, and the cop said no need. Long story short, the screaming Norma did not get to take my pupper from me. The kids looked, honestly? Embarrassed as hell. I should note, the whole time, the kids were not loud, they were not obnoxious, they were not crying they wanted my dog, or any of that. When I was leaving, they had already accepted that and had said bye to Gigi and was just going to go and play. It was all this entitled Norma who was throwing the tantrum because I wouldn't let her have my dog. I don't know what happened with her. After the officer said he'd deal with her, I thanked him and simply left. Gigi and I have been on long walks and have gone past the park several times, but I've never seen her there since, though I've seen her kids a few times and they've pet her again, since, when she's off duty. A person says that the dog is not for sale, and someone can't have it, that someone shouldn't throw a fit, they should just accept it and walk away. Next one is titled, Aunt wants me to work for free. I am skilled at genealogy and research. Because of this, I've helped attorneys and funeral homes help track down next of kin when people have passed. I have also helped people find their birth families. A lot of times I've done this on a volunteer basis but because it is becoming more time consuming, and it requires me to pay for subscription services I've begun charging small fees for my time and to cover the subscription costs. If I can't find what people are looking for, I only charge for what I did find which may be helpful in the future, again, I keep costs low. A couple of weeks ago, my aunt asked me to help find a long lost cousin. I told her no problem, but it would be $60. Which she complained about, she said she would do it herself, then asked me how I do it. I told her about the websites I use, and she complained they would all charge her to sign up and asked me for my login info. I told her no, and that is part of the reason I charge. It's not free for me to do this and it also uses my time and skill set knowing how to properly utilize family trees and other records. She is still mad about it and complaining to any family member that will listen and calling me a big snoop. Yeah, I do snoop, but she wanted to benefit for free from my snooping skills. Next one is titled, I never met an entitled parent like this before. For context I do not really go outside and when I do it's only to play football or go swimming and I wouldn't say I'm socially awkward I'm just a bit introverted. When I go swimming I do so with my twin brother, and we usually throw a ball around, the ball is made out of very soft fabric, so it doesn't hurt if it hits you, or we swim. I'm 15 and we have had a membership for over 3 years. So, I was with my brother and there was a birthday party, there were about 10 to 15 children, and they were all about 10. 
They were acting like total animals, screaming, play fighting, remember in a pool, and just in general being a nuisance. The lifeguard told them off numerous times and the parents did nothing like telling them to quiet down or to behave in a normal manner. Now I understand it was a birthday but come on, at least behave decently. Me and my brother didn't think much, and we went to shower early so we could avoid them but unfortunately, they came into the dressing rooms. Me and my brother were talking in Polish and I asked for him to pass the shampoo and for no reason one of the kids started to imitate what I said as if he was trying to mock me. I didn't think much until he said three times and I just said to him to shut up. I don't know if the kid was insulted but he threw five about tennis ball sized wet tissue balls above through the shower curtain at me. I was already frankly annoyed but first time I can let it slip you know it's his birthday whatever, second time I tell him to stop, you know it could have been a mistake but third time within a minute, it must be on purpose. So I shout who the duck threw the that, who do you think you are? If he wanted to get my attention he did, so he could show his face, but before I could see him and tell him to not do that his dad comes over and starts confronting me as if he wants to fight me. He squares up to me, puts face right in front of mine and starts screaming at me to not say that, and that he was going to get the manager to ban me. When he was confronting me, I replied in a calm voice and explained how they were throwing tissues over at me through the curtain and I explained how the changing room wasn't a playground. I acknowledged how my swearing wasn't the best reaction but at least I reasoned for it and tried to tell him to tell his kids off, but instead he told me to zip it. When my brother came in, he tried the same but in the same aggressive manner the dad tried to defend the kids actions by saying they're only 10 and that it's their birthday and that everyone as a kid made mistakes. Keep in mind he is probably in his 40s and he was trying to start a fight. I guess I'm lucky that me and my brother were taller than him. I don't really know if I acted accordingly, and I don't really know what I should do. Like I don't really want to file a complaint and I don't know if the dad did either so I'm kind of stuck in between. Keep in mind I only created this reddit to just talk about this. Next one is titled, Entitled Dog Owner at Playground. Just had a lovely encounter with an entitled dog owner. I decided to stop at our subdivision's playground on the way back from running an errand with my four-year-old. As I pull up to the parking lot, I see a lady sitting on a bench with her little black and white dog off leash. The little dog was near her, so I didn't think much of it. I get my daughter out of the car and as soon as we start walking to the unfenced playground the little dog and this huge black lab start running up to my daughter. I pulled her back and told the woman that her dogs need to be leashed because this is a playground. She had zero control over them and kept saying they were friendly and could be off leash since they were friendly. This area in our subdivision is not a dog run. It's an unfenced playground area for kids and leash dogs. I told her I didn't care how friendly you say they are. I don't know them, and you need to get them on a leash. She yelled back at me, I have a leash. I said, great, then put them on it. She ended up getting her dogs to come over to her and got them in the car all the while mumbling how I was a huge witch and whatever nonsense she was spouting to herself. I ignored her once she started with the name calling and happily played with my daughter on the playground. I'm sure she will go on our subdivision social media pages and complain about how evil I was to not let two strange dogs go up to my daughter, but I honestly don't care. I wasn't able to get her license plate unfortunately, otherwise I would have reported her. She knew she was in the wrong though because she bolted out of their tout to sweet once she got her dogs under her control. I don't care how friendly your dogs may be, if you are at a playground, please have your dogs on a leash. Last one is titled, Entitled Uncle's Dishonor Veteran Grandpa. I've talked about Shane, 22 MSLR, before on here. He's my, 20 female, boyfriend. On Halloween this year, Shane's grandpa, VG, passed away. Shane came to me today furious about what his uncles, Ken and Kevin, did at the funeral this past weekend. Shane has never been close to VG due to the actions of his uncle Kevin. Kevin was always super scared of Shane and Shane's dad. He's beaten Shane's younger sister in the past and ran from responsibility of his actions. Kevin lived with VG, who was an ex-marine, and VG tried to have a relationship with his grandchildren in his last moments. Shane, unfortunately, was working when VG tried. The funeral was supposed to be a $30,000 service but ended up being a $5,000 service. The pastor? He kept stuttering and going off on tangents. The flag that was folded for his service. Wasn't folded properly by family members. Kevin was in charge of the services. All Kevin talked about was what he was doing with the money after the funeral. He didn't mention VG until 5 minutes before he left. 
Kevin kept the rest of the money and, with the help of Ken, sold everything of value in VG's house. The rest was thrown away. Shane's dad only was able to grab a few things. All Shane himself wanted to remember his grandpa by was a bullet shell from his closet, to make into a necklace. He's completely furious. I'm not mad about the money, but the fact that they penny pinched their own dad's funeral and took everything. My grandpa took care of Kevin and Ken. He loved them, and yet they had the absolute gall to do what they did. Thanks for listening.